In 2022, when the Supreme Court took up New York Rifle and Pistol Club versus Corlett or Bruin, um, it changed a lot about the Second Amendment for the good and for the worse. Now, there was one particular sentence that they said that any Second Amendment restrictions have to be filtered through historical context, meaning what was the historical context taking place at the time that the Second Amendment was written, meaning what other laws were there against guns at the time, and there were none at all. The only one that stood when the Second Amendment was written uh, was really, and I would argue it wasn't standing because the Revolutionary War took place and it kind of banished, but it was a British law. It was a British law on the commoners of the, the citizens of the United States. And of course, after the Revolutionary War, that went out the window. So when the Second Amendment was written, there were no restrictions at all. So that one sentence from the Supreme Court really transformed the Second Amendment really back to the way it always was. However, what we saw was cities and states kind of doubling down on anti-Second Amendment efforts. One might argue that there are people in this country that have less Second Amendment rights since the Bruin decision than they did before the Bruin decision. And one of those is Illinois. Illinois passed an assault weapons ban, put it in quotes. Really what they were talking about is a ban of any weapon that was a rifle, semi-automatic, had a pistol grip, magazine fed, and a stock. If it had those things, it fit in the category of an assault weapon, and they banned them. Anybody who had them had to put them through an illegal anti-constitutional registry, um, and most Illinois citizens refused to do that. And there's, according to the eyes of Illinois, there was really probably tens of thousands of illegal citizens just simply practicing their Second Amendment right and not registering their firearms. Now, what took place Friday, however, was a federal court completely abolished the Illinois assault weapons ban quoting the Supreme Court, saying that it has to fit within the scope of the historical context like it was quoted in the Supreme Court 2022 New York Rifle Club versus Bruin case. And as a result, this does not fit historical context. In addition, this federal judge also said that putting their citizens in a situation where they're limited on the type of weapons they use to defend themselves and defend their country against a tyrannical government only empowers a tyrannical government, further limiting really what it is that Illinois can and cannot do. So as a result, in 30 days from Friday, November 8th, when this was struck down, that all goes out the window. Um, not just allowing those people who already possess these type of firearms to keep their firearms, but also opening up the sale and distribution of these firearms within the state of Illinois. This is a huge victory simply based off of the one sentence from the Supreme Court. Now, I have made videos over the last couple of years that this one sentence has essentially abolished all anti-Second Amendment efforts throughout this country, not some, all of them. And now what we're seeing is federal judges are finally starting to catch up with these doubling down of Second Amendment, anti-Second Amendment efforts from states like Illinois, and essentially saying you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. It does not apply to what is reflected in the historical context of the Second Amendment. And you can't limit a citizen's ability on what weapons they can choose to fight a tyrannical government only empowers a tyrannical government. So um, what we're seeing right now is really, again, anti-Second Amendment efforts in states, counties, and cities across this country doubled down after the New York Rifle Pistol Club versus Bruin case. And now what we're seeing is federal judges are finally kind of getting around and be like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. You can't do that either. And by the way, this also abolishes all capacity laws within the state of Illinois as well. 
um, which has been kind of a problem. I know there's a big problem on the West Coast with Washington, Oregon, and California, as well as on the East Coast. So, you know, ideally these begin to fall like dominoes simply based off of the one sentence from the Supreme Court that it has to follow historical context of what was taking place when the Second Amendment was written. What kind of anti-Second Amendment laws, what kind of gun restrictions were there when it was written? There weren't any, there were none. And you know, in a lot of people, they kind of go back to, well, but they were using muskets. But at the time, a musket was a war rifle. A musket was a war rifle. It was the exact same, if not, well, slightly different guns, but same idea that they were fighting the British with. Uh, armed soldiers coming from England to fight Americans were armed with muskets, you know, and that's, so yeah, it was a musket at the time, but that is a war rifle, just like these rifles that Illinois banned. But here we are, welcome back to the AR and AK world, all you Illinois citizens, those of you who kind of held on to your firearms, to wait this one out, good job. Uh, so there you go, man. Uh, 30 days uh, from November 8th, as this is gone. Any thoughts or insight on any of this? Definitely put it below. I do want to take a moment and say that most people watch this channel. Hey, they're not subscribers. Click that subscribe button. It greatly increases the algorithm and our ability to get these messages out. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel we take prayer requests, so please don't ever, ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.